Welcome to Tay Talk, episode 5, the night before the first day of virtual school, with your host, Future Dog Pete. Hi guys, it's me, Future Doc P, and I am here to show you my weekly lesson and rehearsal plan for a virtual chorus. So, um, I pretty much made this template um, because uh, it's typically difficult for us as musicians and music teachers to find a lesson plan template that really focuses on what we do. Um, and I don't typically address my classes as classes, they're rehearsals. And so we needed a rehearsal plan and not just a lesson plan, because if you think about it, um, within a rehearsal, there are several different plans that culminate into that one rehearsal. So, um, a couple of things, of course, I have the days of the week and then I have the focus area. And so I have a couple of different things that encompass what I think is what's necessary for the ultimate uh, choral rehearsal, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. So, of course, you have the welcome and then attendance. And then you have a time to do warm ups and vocalizing. Um, then you have oral skills and sight reading, music theory component, and then your classwork assignment that they'll do uh, on demand or asynchronously on their own. And then they have their independent work, AKA their homework. So what they need to do after um, class is over. Then of course you have your closing activities and announcements, um, and then any summative assignments that are due. And then of course the repertoire that you're going to be using and reinforcing throughout your rehearsal. So um, just a couple of things. I'm not gonna go through the whole uh, weekly lesson or rehearsal plan. I'm just gonna go through Monday. But um, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. If you want a copy of this, I will gladly send it to you as well. So um, each day of the week has some themed days. As you can see, uh, Mondays are Motivation Monday, and then we have TED Talk Tuesdays, and then you have your Independent Work Day, Independent Work Wednesdays, <laughs> Theory Thursday, and then Spotlight Friday. Um, and so on Mondays, students will listen to a variety of different choral uh, repertoire just across the wide diaspora of choral uh, vo and vocal musics. So this uh, Monday, they will be listening to, or they will, or they, they did listen to, um, the Oakwood Aeolians We Shall Overcome Virtual Choir. And um, they responded to the video and they talked about their feelings and the emotions that came over them when as they were listening to the piece. Um, and I'm excited to listen to uh, to look at their uh, their listening journals to see if um, if they were affected in similar ways that I was when I first uh, listened to it. So then on Tuesday, we have TED Talk Tuesdays. Of course, most of us adults, we know what TED Talks are, those inspirational speeches that are on uh, different topics and things. I found several TED Talks that I want to um, show to my students and it's just a motivational moment and so the students will also be doing journaling with the TED Talk just um, going over what they took away from the video. Um, I try to choose videos that either introduce or reinforce concepts that I will be teaching in class so that they're able to connect the dots and you know make the synapses connections um a couple just make a couple more wrinkles in the brain so um the ted talks have been great for me finding good ted talks um because i've been inspired all over again uh wednesday's independent work day they're able to 
um, work on their own on any assignments that they may have. And if they need help or any extra guidance, they're able to pop into a Zoom call and ask their question or send me an email. Um, and it's a great opportunity for me to reset or readjust my lesson plan um, just in case I might need to add more or take stuff off and move it all, move it further down the week or to the next week. And it also allows me a chance to really plan for the rest of the week. Um, theory Thursday, I've been doing Theory Thursdays for a very long time now, is of course Music Theory Thursday. So this particular week, we're going to be doing a Music Theory Diagnostic Test just to help me see where um, all of my students are, regardless of if they're new or old, is always the same diagnostic test because sometimes they don't always remember what you thought they would remember. And so um, I use that diagnostic test to kind of gauge where exactly I can start as far as um, music theory is concerned. And sometimes um, my students surprise me and um, are able to advance and move faster through music theory, basic music theory. So the diagnostic test is always good for that. Spotlight Friday this week is going to be uh, on demand using Flipgrid. Um, for Spotlight Friday, the students are able to perform any type of music that they want to, um, and they get to take the floor. They get to take center stage and take the spotlight and sing whatever they want. Um, they have about a minute and 30 seconds to sing their heart's content, which was usually about a verse and a chorus. They're able to rap, they're able to sing, they're able to play an instrument. Um, some people are able to dance, uh, since we're doing them asynchronously this time. Um, and so it's just a really good way to let their hair down. And of course, uh, if three students perform, then I always perform as well. So I'm looking forward to that um, this week. Um, so for Monday, we'll go over Monday since I said that's what we're going to do. Um, so as you can see, um, the students will be watching the welcome video that I did. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Okay, the students will be watching the welcome video that I did on CTLS and I linked it into um, my lesson plan. And also I gave them a tutorial video about how to log into our learning management system. Um, <clears throat> and then of course they log in through to Zoom through CTLS. Um, I take attendance using the Zoom attendance report and then um, they have a Zoom tutorial on that. And it's a really great feature if you use Zoom. Only thing about it is that you have to make sure that the students are using their are uh, using their first and last name when they're in there. So you might need to make sure that you remind them um, to rename themselves or to allow them the option to rename themselves just in case they're on their parents' Zoom or something of that nature. <clears throat> we also did an overall general expectation of the class, and I'll show you the um, expectation slide that I use as a part of our class agenda a little bit after this um, document here. So for our warm-up activity, I always kind of try to start slow and be very thorough and precise and go over every example, um, every exercise that we do in order to get them understanding exactly why uh, we do uh, the things that we do during our warmups. So of course, I don't talk too much about it. We always, I always try to have them experience it first and then I ask them why they think we do it and then I clarify. So I give them the opportunity to make their own decisions about what they're doing and why it's it's uh, purposeful with uh, singing and the physical aspects of singing. So it's always interesting to hear their their ideas and their opinions 
Um, and a lot of times they are on the right track. So it's just a matter of getting them to, to get out there. Oral skills and sight reading would normally be next. And because it was the first day of school, of course, we weren't going to dive right into that. I didn't want to scare them away. Um, music theory, we're not, again, we're not going to uh, get to that quite yet. Uh, we'll, we'll get that to that on Thursday with their diagnostic access, uh, assessment. So once I finished the warm up, basically, that's the end of our live session for Monday. And then I will remain in our live Zoom chat for the remainder of the class period while they work on their class work assignments. So their class work assignments were a few of the, the, the paperwork type situations. Um, so they had to read the handbook and syllabus and complete their student survey. Um, and the student survey just asked them a few questions about their goals for vocal improvement, as well as um, their minor. So I'm giving them a secondary, uh, a secondary uh, thing that they can do outside of just learning and building choral, choral vocal technique. Um, and they have the things to choose from are uh, personal or private lessons, so one-on-one 30-minute lessons, piano lessons, songwriting tutorials, um, music production tutorials, and I don't know if I said keyboarding or piano, but I think I did. Oh, and musical theater. So they have those choices that they are able to do. And we'll be pulling in um, some master clinicians throughout um, our time. And I think even when we do go back face to face, we're still going to continue to keep the same thing going on um, because it's a great way to kind of divide the time. We normally have 90 minute blocks uh, when we're face to face and virtual we actually only have 70, but it's still a lot of time. So you, if you can imagine um, being in really long Zoom meetings as adults, you don't want to do that as uh, as teachers and students because you get burned out very quickly. And it's also not the best practice anyway as um in a digital in a digital classroom setting so they do those um and then they're i had them register for the chorus band app account i also had them download and create the flipgrid uh the, the flipgrid account and join the flipgrid for the chorus page for this year and then also i had them follow all of the social medias or at least just one um, I love to uh, promote what we're doing because that's the way that we tell our story. Because if no one else tells, if we don't tell our story, then someone else will tell their version of the story. So you want to make sure that you are putting out your best face for all of the public to see and hear. And it's also a great way to uh, publicize the program and um, make yourself uh, your your groups um, more visible in the community as well as in the school. Um, and then, of course, you have their they had their listening and reflection journal assignment from, um, of course, the Motivation Monday. So their independent work was to review the general tutorial videos for Flipgrid, and I posted that on um, CTLS in their resources tab closing activities and announcements i reviewed all of their assess uh, assignments for the week um and i was going to do that as a video format and i may or may not ever get to that video but i always try to wrap up um at the end of class anyway so summative assignments do uh, didn't have any assignments, summative assignments due on Monday, but they will have quite a few assessments that are due on Friday. Repertoire that we're going to be using is going to be the traditional happy birthday, um, the one that everyone always tries to avoid because at the time it was copyrighted, but now um, it's in public domain, so yay. <laughs> no more really bad happy birthday songs. <laughs> um, 
And uh, the reason I chose that is because happy birthday is actually melodically very difficult for a, a lot of uh, young singers. So it's a very interesting way to gauge uh, a lot of oral skills that the students may have, as well as their vocal range and flexibility. So I like using happy birthday as their vocal uh, vocal assessment. And that is what our first week's plan is. And I'm going to be uh, working on the next week's plan very soon. So if you have any questions again, just let me know and I'll be happy to share. All right, so now we're talking about the Cobb Teaching and Learning System, AKA CTLS. So what we're looking at right here is the student side of CTLS. So this would be CTLS Learn for the students. Um, a really, really smart idea from um, this company was to allow teachers to be able to see both sides of the platform to make sure that everything the, that they were putting on their classes, their digital classes, the digital platform were actually working. Um, and Cobb has did a phenomenal job with getting this platform built. It's basically the Google Classroom, classroom Blackboard, Canvas, um, any learning management system that you may have used or might be using right now, this probably trumps it. It is absolutely almost all encompassing and it's ever evolving. It's continuously evolving as Cobb teachers are making suggestions about what we may need or features that we could have. The, uh, the, web, uh, the web developers or the software developers are making those adjustments and we are consistently seeing growth and change happening live in live time with CTLS. Um, another great thing about this is, um, I know myself as well as other teachers, we were like, what? Seats Cobb has been really doing a good job about preparing uh, preparing us to use CTLS. Um, the learning curve was really, we thought it was gonna be really steep um, and that the software wouldn't be very intuitive, but it was actually very much so intuitive. And the, the training was very detailed. Um, they gave really great tutorial videos as well as written, um, written infographics as well as actual uh, research and data to have us really thinking about how to change our teaching pedagogy in order to effectively teach our content digitally. And so I really, really um, think that Cobb really thought this through when they were having uh, the company build CTLS. Um, and it definitely has the ability to become one of, if not the greatest learning management systems um, that we're using in education today. So now that I've given all the glows about CTLS and Cobb Tech, um, just going over what it looks like for the students. So um, we as teachers have to build our classes and add our students rosters into the class, which actually is not a bad situation. It's pretty, pretty flexible. Um, but in that, we wind up with all of our classes. Uh, we're on a block schedule at my school. So I teach three course classes and then I have a homeroom class. So um, I went ahead and added a homeroom page. And you can see here, the instructor information is there. Um, also a class board where things will stay uh, on for students to be able to see and access really quickly. Also, we have the ability to navigate the page um, and edit that and add things and take things away as we need to. Um, for this page, because it's advisement, I have seniors this year. Um, and so everything that the counselors have been giving us 
Um, I've been posting it for them, all of the tech help for CTLS. I've also been posting that just so that they have it available. So then let's take a look at Concert Choir. So I have three sections of a, a mixed chorus in uh, my Concert Choir, beginning, intermediate, advanced, mixed chorus. And that's because I have most of my guys in, all in the same class period, um, just so that they can help each other. My older students help out my beginners and they are my leaders and they help those other students along. And it's great to be able to be in the same class. And because I only have three class periods, um, it's good for all of them to be able to be together um, to, you know, foster that brotherhood that I really love uh, to see and experience in the tenor and bass sections. So in the course, uh, course page, you have, of course, again, the instructor information. Um, and then the class board, which is where I put my welcome video and also how to navigate the page. So I just quickly just tell them how to get to everything um, and what all the different tabs and features are really quickly and then how to get to our digital sessions, aka our virtual live class sessions. Of course, on the left hand side, you have your announcements. Um, there is Flipgrid tutorial there. Let's talk about digital assessments. So over here on the left hand side on the panel here, there's the digital sessions. You just click on the digital sessions. And of course, you're seeing that there is the class that have the classes that have been published for the students to be able to see on the teacher side i can see the whole week's classes but if i haven't built them yet to include all the links and all of the assessments then i don't publish it because i don't want them to see anything unfinished or try to start working on something when i might not wind up doing it so i only publish when i'm ready for the students to see and so right now i have monday's class and then i have tuesday's class up so at the bottom um excuse me at the top you have um the banner and i created that banner on canva um, and if you don't know about canva it's a graphic design uh, website that's web-based there's also a app for your phone or tablet it's super cool um, and really easy to uh, make posters and flyers and business cards and things of that nature uh, and PowerPoints even. And I'll show you that in the, the last little thing that I show you. Um, but if you didn't know, uh, uh, one of my handy dandy uh, media specialists at my school told us that we as educators could get uh, Canva accounts, pro, uh, pro accounts, I believe, uh, for free. And so uh, I will put that link to that page for you to sign up if you're interested in the, uh, in the info box below. So on your course page, I uh, put the information into the class. So the reason you see one Monday's class and the date is because and if you don't put the name, um, if you don't put the number in front, then sometimes the when you uh, publish the pages, they'll just be randomly in order and be out of order. So I like to keep things in order. So I'll do number one, Monday's class, and then that's the assignment. So of course you'll see my name and there's no expiration on the class session, which means that it's always available. So if kids come into the class late, um, say they get added on Thursday, then they can still go back and complete their assignments. Also, as far as assignments are concerned, there are four assignments that were assigned in Monday's class and it tells you 
what is in progress, what's already been submitted, and what's been finished. And of course, I don't do this is this this is my personal student account, so there are no assignments that have been <laughs> submitted. So we go into the lesson, and you'll see that uh, you'll see a message from me where it says uh, Monday's recording. So I have uploaded the recording of Monday's class into CTLS for students who were not able to log in on the first day. Um, and that was a, quite a few of my first block kids. Um, CTLS was bugging out <laughs> because of all the people who were trying to log in. So I put the recording up there and it opens up into a new tab. That's always a feature. And there's our digital session. And so students can review as they need to. And it's super simple and easy. All right, so of course I always have my little blurb about what's going on with school. So before joining our live session, be sure to view the welcome page on the class home page. That should say welcome video. Um, I'll be going live 10 minutes before 8 a.m. with some tunes to welcome you back to school and then we will get started. See you soon. So just really a uh, personable way to do things. Um, the chat feature, the chat box is there. Um, and normally I'll write in this chat box to let them know if something's going on before um, opening up Zoom. And then I'll close this chat box so that, you know, it's not just randomly open and people talking and stuff on that chat when they're supposed to be talking in the Zoom. Um, also in the digital session, you have lesson resources. And I have a couple of things posted here. Um, also, I have a link to a tutorial that I did for them in order for them to know how to access their digital assignments. Lesson uploads. Um, this is where you can see where your lesson assignments uploads were. And of course, I haven't uploaded anything because I didn't do any of the assignments. <laughs> and then, of course, the lesson assignments. So green means that was the start date. Yellow means that the due date, that is the due date. And then red means that it's now late. So two of these assignments are late and then two of them are due a little bit later on in the month. Um, there's a whole bunch of other things and tools and things in CTLS. And as I come across them, I would be happy to talk more about them in detail. Um, and I think that's all about this and the first day stuff that I'm going to talk about for this one. Okay, so one more thing to talk about here. All right, so last but not least um, is our class agenda. So this is what the students see when they log into Zoom on most days, unless I'm completely uh, out of uh, out of order um, and they come in when I'm still preparing. But I have this main screen posted and so there's music playing and I basically format my class, my digital class, just like I would my in-person class. So the students have their class agenda up at the very beginning so that they're able to know exactly what we're doing, um, exactly what I'm, what our learning questions are and all those things. Um, and I play music as well. So it's the very same thing. Um, and it was very familiar to the students. We talked about course expectations and netiquette and I borrowed this kind of template and design from my dear friend, Jamez Dudley, um, brilliant music educator um, and very, very creative uh, uh, person. So I just borrowed it and then I went to Canva, you know, handy dandy Canva and created my own version that was tailored to our school colors and also our little logo there. And then we get to our class agenda. And so I have a class agenda 
all year long. So daily, the kids know exactly what we're gonna be doing in class. They know what materials they're gonna be using. They know our learning questions uh, and they know what we're gonna be doing to doing during the day and how they are gonna be expected to learn and also how they show that they learned it. So um, all of this is gonna be up and posted for the students daily. And of course, this uh, agenda changes and morphs as uh, the days go on. Um, so for the rehearsal plan, we have what the group warm up is, and then our music literacy, which would be our sight reading or our oral skills uh, tasks, and then our repertoire that we use, as well as an important reminders. Um, so it just helps me keep track of everything that I need to tell the kids, as well as um, helping the kids kind of be very independent and actually keep me on track. Um, sometimes my student leaders are like, hey, Ms. Pittman, we didn't do this. We didn't do that warm up. So they keep me honest, which is really cool. Um, and I think that's it. Again, please send me an email if um, you would like any of this information. I think when I do my overview of the first day of school in the next segment, I uh, will drop my email address in the video as well. All right, guys, so um, thanks so much for joining me. Um, I went over the lesson plan for the week that I'm gonna be doing, um, as well as um, what uh, the Cobb County Teaching and Learning System, or AKA CTLS, looks like. And then I also went over uh, what my class agenda looks like, so what the kids see whenever they're in Zoom. Um, I am an open book, and I believe that iron sharpens iron. So if there's any teaching resources that you um, want, or if there's any advice or uh, questions that you have for me, please feel free to send me an email. I am more than happy to help out in any capacity that I can. Um, all of our kids deserve the best education that they can have while we are remote or hybrid or singing socially distance uh, in person. And so I want to help you facilitate that. So whatever I can do, I will. Um, my final takeaways, especially from first day of school, I had absolutely a ball. Um, and you're listening to my dog lick his water bowl at this very inopportune time. Anyway, so um, we had a ball um, today. I was very pleased with how everything um, went. We had a little bumpy start at the beginning, I think probably because there was about 160,000 people trying to get on CTLS at eight o'clock in the morning. So it was uh, an interesting start, um, but it didn't last long. The little spinning wheel of death did not last long. Um, I had students uh, coming in, smiling faces, excited and ready to learn and ready to sing. And that's exactly what we did. Um, I'm super excited uh, to work with these students, um, both my returning singers as well as my new singers. Um, I think that we're going to preserve and I think that we're going to push forward and continue to be better and get better and grow as vocal musicians uh, independently for right now, but um, soon and hopefully very soon, we will be able to safely come together and sing again. Um, this is Future Doc P with a uh, educational, uh, edutainment, I guess you would say, Tay Talk. See you later. Hey guys. If you're interested in getting more educational tutorials, please click the like button and also subscribe. See you next time.